Just a minute. Can I share the screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you able to see the slideshow? Okay. Yes, yes. yes. All right. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Prajarine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, we'll begin with a little quick review, what we covered in the last class. We heard about the qualities of a representative of Srila Vyasa Dev. Specifically, we were talking about Sutta Goswami, his qualification to represent Srila Vyasadev. And we went over the different qualities like he's free of all vices and he's learned in all the different philosophies and he received the blessings from his spiritual teachers like that. Uh, then we heard about the standard of the people in the age of Kali, right? You'll remember, lazy, misguided, unlucky, always disturbed, and of course, short life. Don't live a long time. So that was the standard. And then we presented Lord Krishna as the absolute truth, right? Lord Krishna is the absolute truth. It be, the, the first verse began, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We are offering our obeisances to the personality of Godhead who is the son of Vasudev. So he's described as the son of Vasudev, but he's also described as Bhagavan, Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So he's he was the absolute truth, and then he's also mentioned Janmadhyasya uh, Yato Navayat, right? Janmadhyasya, that he's the cause of the, the creation, the maintenance, and destruction, the three phases of time. They're all resting in him. And he's Abhigyana and Swarat. Abhigyana, he means it's all cognizant, and Swarat is independent. So only. The personality of Godhead has that unique position to know everything and at the same time to be independent. We know something but we're dependent on others. But Lord Krishna is totally independent and he's all, he knows everything. So he only Lord Krishna has that position. So uh, that also establishes him as the absolute truth. And then uh, the, the verse concludes with uh, Satyam Param Dimahi. Satyam Param Dimahi. I meditate on that person who is the absolute truth, who is the, the supreme truth. The Satyam Param, the supreme truth. Dimahi means we meditate on him. So this is uh, Lord Krishna. And He's defined in the very first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam as the Absolute Truth. And then the relationship between the Absolute and the Relative Truth. The Absolute Truth means the spiritual world, means the, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His incarnations in the spiritual world. The Relative Truth means the material world, 
all temporary truths, things which are true today and are not true tomorrow. So the material world is full of relative truths, but this material world is the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's a, the shadow of the Supreme Lord. It's the external potency. The Absolute Truth is the internal potency. All right, then we spoke about, uh, oh, okay, chapter one, overview. Prelude to Srimad Bhagavatam. The subject, the glories, and the goal of the Bhagavatam. The first three verses are the invocation to the Srimad Bhagavatam. The first three verses, of course, they're all memorization verses, verses which we should know, and we should know them well, and we should be able to explain something of the different uh, points which are made within these verses. So the first verse describes the uh, Absolute Truth, Lord Krishna, and then the second and third verse goes on to describe the glories of the Bhagavatam. And the goal, what is the goal of the Bhagavatam? The goal is satyam param dimahi. The goal is to meditate on the Supreme Absolute Truth. So the first three verses are the invocation or the prelude. And then the chapter goes on and we hear about the sages of Naimisharanya performing 1,000 year sacrifice because they knew Kali Yuga was approaching. They were coming to the Kali Yuga and they were concerned for the welfare of the people in the Kali Yuga. They wanted to know about what would be beneficial for the people in the Kali Yuga. So the sages, after glorifying Sutta Goswami's qualification, then they made their inquiries. And we see in the first chapter different questions which are asked by the sages of Naimisharanya. So there, there were six questions asked by the sages. Now, these questions are understood, different acharyas explain them in different ways, just like Jiva Goswami may explain one way and uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur may explain in an, another way. When they talk about the pastimes of the Lord, Jiva Goswami may say this is the pastimes of the Lord in creation. And Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur may say, you know, this is the pastimes of the Lord in his, it could be his, all of his pastimes, his leelas, and as well as not, not only creation. So there are six questions. We'll be looking at those as we go on into the second chapter. You have the six questions listed for you in the student handbook. You can see the six questions and the verse where they're from. And so you should know this, all the acharyas, they identify these six questions. They just identify them in different ways. Okay. So the first verse, the opening verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam is offering obeisances to Lord Sri Krishna, who is the absolute truth. The subject and goal of Srimad Bhagavatam is to know the Absolute Truth. And we said, Satyam Param Dimahi. We want to meditate on the Supreme Absolute Truth. So we have to know, we want to know about Him. We want to absorb our minds in thinking of Him and remembering Him. So Srila Vyasadeva begins by offering his obeisances to Lord Krishna who is the son of Vasudev, and who is the Supreme Absolute Truth. Then verses 2 and 3 go on to glorify the Srimad Bhagavatam, the topmost scripture which brings us to the point of achieving the goal, the goal, satyam param dimahi. Okay, so here's the second verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Dharma Prajita Kaitavotra Paramo Nermatsara Nam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu Shivadam Tapan Tapa Trayon Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parer Ishwara Sadyoridaya Varujate Takriti Bihi Sushru Shubis Takshanat. Right? So Oh, <laughs> this, uh, this second verse of the Bhagavatam describes about real and pretentious religion, right? There's ka dharma and kaitava dharma. Kaitava dharma means cheating religions. Oh, we we'll, we'll put here, show the distinction between real and pretentious religion group skits. Show the distinction between real and pretentious religion. So real religion we will consider to be actual dharma according to the principles of Srimad Bhagavatam. Actual dharma, the supreme religion, is devotional service unto the Supreme Lord. And Pretentious religion will be concerned with material gain, material sense gratification. There are four goals in material life. You know, the Vedas speak about the, the Purusha Artas, Chatur, the, the four goals. The, there is Dharma, Arta, Kama, and Moksha. So generally cheating religion or pretentious religion are concerned with these things. It's, they're concerned with sense gratification. How many people do we have here today? In our class? 33. How many? 33. How many? 33. Oh, 32. Oh, 33, 32, huh? that's quite a lot of people. Mm. To show the distinction between real and pretentious religion. Anyway, let's try it. You know, break into groups and let's have uh, six groups. We'll have six, make six groups out of our 32 students. It's about five people and six in some. And see what you can come up with. By how, will, how would you like to demonstrate this? By a skit. It can be a I think if you can make a skit, uh, you know, a, a little kind of dramatical interaction, how will you show the difference between real and pretentious religion? Okay. All right. So, yeah. we want to have five, uh, uh, six, six groups, right? Okay. Okay. So, each group. Manoj, can you explain yes. the meaning yeah. of real and pretentious religion once again? Sorry? Manoj, can you explain the meaning of real and pretentious religion? Yes, you can in the beginning, but then also try to demonstrate it. To show, oh. to show it, you know, not just only talk, but I want to see a little kind of, uh, a little drama, you know, a little bit, uh, and because you have, you have a group, you know, you, you want to use the people in the group, so give everyone a chance to get involved. If just one person talks, then the other people don't do anything, but I'd like to see the people, in the, I'd like to see people in the group a little engaged. So you have a group of six people, you can have ha half the group can be showing what is real religion, the other half can show what is pretentious religion. So first to third group can show uh, what is... Uh... No, all the groups do the same. All, yeah, okay. all, all six groups, all, yeah. each of the six groups, you all have to... I want to see what, what are your ideas to show 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, yeah. uh, just uh, wanted to clarify uh, before we start uh, planning any any skit on this. So uh, the idea of real or uh, a real and pretentious uh, uh, dharma would be like any uh, mundane activities can be pre- shown as a pretended or it has to be related to anything devotional but which is relating to material gain. I just wanted to clarify on the pretentious religion. Well, if it's related to material gain, then certainly it's pretentious religion, right? So anything that's related to preten- uh, material gains, then it is pretentious. And then anything related to leading to, maybe it is looking material, but it is leading to uh, the supreme goal, uh, serving the supreme lord, then it is uh, real dharma, right? If it's the practice of devotional service, then it's the real dharma. It should be pure devotional service. Sure, Maharaj. Understood. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna. Okay. So we'll give you five minutes. Just come up some something quick. You know, it shouldn't be, you know, it's not going to be a, a long drama. It should just take like 30 seconds or a minute or so to just show us. What is your idea about real religion and pretentious religion? And if you want to speak at the beginning, you can do that. But I want to see some kind of dramatical presentation. Engage the devotees. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I, I think one of, one of the points we should highlight is, uh, uh, as Prabhupada said many times, that to love the God is the real purpose of a religion. So I think yes, whatever the path or whatever the religions in the world, if they teach properly how to love the God, then actually it is called a religion. I think if we can also include this point as a as a real religion. All right. How are you going to show that? How are you going to show how people develop love of God? processes uh, which actually produce the results that actually also one of the distinguishing feature of the real religion from the uh, Shavuotal religion. Yes. How are we going to demonstrate it? How can we show it? Dramatically. What does someone do if they have to practice, if they're practicing real religion, what will they be doing? They'll be following Navda Bhakti process. Yes, so what will they be doing? They'll be building temples, they'll be chanting. (laughs) Chanting, okay, I think that's a bit better. I think chanting, I think chanting or kirtan, they'll engage in kirtan or chanting the holy name or maybe they're having sangha, you know, discussing, reading Bhagavad Gita, giving a class, you know, like that. Somebody. Some are speaking, others are hearing. You know, that's, that's the path of bhakti. And, and what about the people who are, not, who are pretentious? What are they going to be doing? They would desire for material gain, like we can show that, you know, one of the person is asking, maybe doing some religious principles such as yajna to gain some um, wealth or fame. So they are practicing religion, uh, they are basically, you know, practicing religion, but to gain some material benefit. Yes. Right. What kind of of benefit? Um, As in like wealth or fame, name, month, like any between, if we are showing the state, we can show a person, you know, who is chanting mantras and praying to the demigod. Um, for 
Okay? Yes. Right. Have you ever done that? Did you ever pray, do that? Pray to a demigod? Yes. Not yet, Maharaj. <laughs> really? You never did that? You only pray, pray to Krishna. Maharaj, one person can uh, become a, like a bogus guru and he is trying to take some money from his disciples. One of the attendants could be a show as a disciple and there there could be a dialogue between in them. Like he's asking for money for uh, giving mantra and he's asking to tell them to, to worship demigods in that way it could be a show. Okay, yes. Good. Okay. So you could be the bogus guru, right? Yes, So who would be the my disciple for that? The Maharaji, just now. Okay. I can be your disciple, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Mataji, I will ask a certain amount of money for initiative. And I will see you, you can chant anyone, anyone's name. Okay, there is no need of chanting. Yeah, so I can ask you that, you know, what prayer, uh, what should I do, what name should I take, and you can say that you can take name of any Intemi God for ben any benefit, material benefit, you can list any material benefit. And and what, how do we show the right path? Like Mara said, till now we showed the uh, negative aspect. And, uh, the right path Sachinandan Prabhu and Bhaktar Sal Nasim Prabhu and Abhya Prabhu can do, like uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe book distribution story can be taken like uh, Abhay Prabhu become a non-devotee and Sachin Adhan Prabhu become a devotee and he is preaching about like you read Bhagavad Gita, yes Prabhu I think you are Yeah, like Sachin Adhan Prabhu is preaching to Abhay Prabhu and Pasvat Sanatsan Prabhu that you should yeah, read yeah. Bhagavad Gita. Okay. So the uh, breakout room will close within the next 50 seconds. Yeah, so we have to... Maharaj said you have to, we have to do it in five minutes. So five minutes are done. Yes, right. I think, I think you have enough. I think you have, you know what you're doing. I think you've got it. Very nice. You just have to do it. Okay, sure. Then uh, we can leave the way for two and we can meet at the main yeah. Yeah. meeting. Recording in progress. Hare Krishna, everyone back? Yeah, Prabhupada, like others as well join. It's just 26 people right now. Okay. Okay. I think just about everyone's here now. All right, yeah, everyone's back. Almost my just few people, one or two. Yes, they all are here now. All right, so let's let's hear from our group number one. We're, we're going to hear. So, Hare Krishna. So, I'm playing a part of a bogus group showing the how the, the pretended religions are practiced, and Matni is would be doing a being my fake disciple, not original disciple. So now we are going to start. And some other members of our group also, they they show the right thing. And we are first displaying the negative thing, how things going in uh, in modern world. Okay. okay. So. Uh, I'll start. So uh, because Praj is acting as my spiritual master, I enter the room and I say, Oh, Guru Maharaj, what are your instructions for me? Oh. I'm thinking if I, well, my account has been become empty, I need so many disciples. And uh, okay, so the first service of spiritual master is to support him financially. Okay, so you do one thing, you transfer 50,000 rupees in my account. Okay, and all mercy will be given to you. Okay, this is my blessing for you. And, uh, 
and what you can do also just no need to chant your rounds okay you can chant you can worship any demi god okay there's no need of doing anything special practice do whatever you like eat whatever you <coughs> eat whatever you like and be free this is actually meditation this is called free meditation okay Just close your eyes sit for a half an hour or maybe for 15 minutes and you will feel relax and be sure to make transfer money by today okay so oh, i don't have to follow any principles i don't have to worship any like it's upon me i can worship anyone i just have to give you 50000 rupees see actually all these rules and regulations are quite traditional okay we are coming with a new meditation technique this teaches you to do everything freely okay enjoy your life 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 is very short actually just 40 50 years now okay so enjoy life and actually myself also doing it okay so how can i stop my disciple to doing it so my thought yeah. is actually you you do it you do it freely and whenever you having any disturbance problem just come back to me okay i'm always i'm living in my ashram having snacks okay no issue Jai Maharaj, you are very merciful. Paytm will check Maharaj. And bring, bring, bring 10-15 people who are watching me, okay? okay? Bring all these 10-15 people, I will, I will try to initiate them, okay? And initiation right. charge is very less actually. I just, actually I reduce it only to 1,000 rupees. So bring all these people, see there are so many nice people I am looking at. Bring all these people. Okay. Okay, okay, sure. okay very good, thank you. So this is pretentious religion. Let's see genuine religion now. Um, Hare Krishna. Yeah. So we, we, we are part of group two. So no, uh, we're still in group one. <laughs> we want group one. We didn't finish group one yet. <laughs> group one didn't finish. Okay, so in group one, uh, I am playing the disciple, and uh, Abhay Prabhu is playing uh, uh, Guru. And uh, as a good disciple, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very submissive, and uh, I told him that uh, I want true Krishna love. So Abhay Prabhu is now going to suggest me how to get causeless mercy of Lord Krishna. Abhay Prabhu. Yes, Sachinandan Prabhu, tell me. I am your disciple. And uh, I have come to your uh, come to you, and I want causeless Krishna's mercy. So please suggest me how do I get it? It's a it's a first of all it's a causeless mercy. So you don't have to do anything. But if you are serious, then you will show be proactive uh, initiative from your side. And first of all is uh, you have to chant uh, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Or precipitated number of times, and then follow the four regulatory principles. Are you ready for this? Okay. Uh, by following these principles and chanting, I'll be able to achieve Krishna. Yes, if you follow it undeviatingly as per the instructions, then sure shot. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. We have seen here real religion. All right, let's hear group number two. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. So we are people, five people, uh, people. So uh, we we try to work on in in a group uh, uh, where uh, uh, myself, the Ninjal Kumar will set the prelog, and then we will uh, depict this artha karma. Uh, Dharma and pure devotional service by each of the devotees. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, 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 why, why Lord Krishna is only enjoying? We are also his uh, uh, eternal associates. So why we don't get a chance to enjoy? Who so so this material earth? Oh, our father is so generous. He has created the whole planet with uh, all the necessity and all paraphernalia. So let's enjoy. And 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 uh, the way uh, 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 Krishna was enjoying is follow the uh, uh, Brindavan. So over to Devananjan Das Prabhu. Yes. So there is a similar you can say uh, drama theme for us. Yeah. I am talking about artha, the money. 
पैसा होते ना मनी हनी मनी हनी सो लाइक दिस वी हैव अ गुड एग्जांपल वेरी वेरी रिच रिच पर्सन एंड रिच गुरु फॉर दिस इज इट वाज सेइंग इन द फर्स्ट ग्रुप दैट जस्ट गिव जस्ट गिव अस सम मनी बॉटल ऑफ रुपीस वन लाख टू लाख एंड आई जस्ट बिकम अ एग्जांपल and most important there is the need to follow follow the rules like you, you can chant only one round of hari krishna mahamantra which is enough for us and since this is a given life so only you, you put in one time in life so enjoy the life and uh, you can have all the sense gratification and uh, you can stay live in a very royal royal life and there is no need to uh, follow the rules no bhakti required because and uh, so much as what we you can drink whatever you can like we say that in the heaven they they take so much as so you can enjoy it and take it so much as and have a good like uh, peaceful life and uh, all this uh, six rules or whatever you can don't follow the six rules whatever so the artha is is very important and uh, after so artha can be utilized in any way what you want and at the end you might get uh ma uh, mukti you can say but but, but this uh, uh, artha the money is important and with money you can buy anything it happens also so so but without bhakti it is artha which is important so just enjoy by by spending the money as you want on the hand enjoy with the sense gratification hari krishna oh lord so uh, uh, lord has given us everything all the wealth but Our, our greed has created a differentiation. We have started hoarding things. We have monetized the things, and 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 so the differentiations then happen. And everybody want to enjoy in different format. So this the, the great exploitations of the resources of our father. Now we want to satisfy our senses and enjoy like Krishna. So over to C H K D. Hare Krishna I am playing the role of Kama <clears throat> What is the goal of religion ha huh? potential religion I am discussing We have to satisfy our senses This earth is made for Krishna everything is for him so how we will satisfy our Krishna so go to any demigod satisfy your senses that is the goal of life Uh, whatever you want to do, break the regulatory principles. What Charvak Muni says, "Yava jive sumnive rampa gati." That is the goal of life. Otherwise, after this life, who knows where will we go? So, do your services, worship God. But ultimate goal is satisfying our senses. Because if we are not satisfied, then how we will satisfy others? So that's why just focus first on your satisfaction, and wherever you get satisfaction, whether demi god. whether kali puja whether tantra mantra anywhere do that first that is the goal of life to satisfy our senses thank you so oh, why we are not enjoying our senses the way the lord krishna was enjoying over there what wrong with us we had all the wealth we are using this but still we are not happy so there is something missing let's let's do some dharma what uh, the lord has suggested us in the booklet which they have given in a manual form let's live refer it and explore something uh, to make our life happier over to csd i think we can keep it uh... limited so that every group gets equal time yeah. do you have anything else for yes sir we we are talking about the dharma is paro dharma is the highest form of religion uh, krishna has given so many uh, paths for us to get moksha or go to him but by following this bhakti yoga uh, which is given Uh, from the scriptures we can achieve the highest uh, uh, unmotivated and uninterrupted service for lord krishna so in this way actually uh, we can achieve this paro dharma which is been described in shrimad bhagavatam so that is the real path of religion hari krishna 
finally, we, we, we are all still suffering. We are unable to enjoy the way that Krishna was doing. So I think that we have to reboot ourselves and think about something so, uh, to go back to our origin, eternal home, back to the uh, Golok Vrindavan. This is not the place of enjoyment. Over to Diksha Mataji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Chant everybody. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. Okay, so that was real religion there at the end. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have to stop here now. Let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Is everybody seeing the PowerPoint okay? Yes, Prabhupada. Yes, okay, so here's from Prabhupada. Prabhupada is explaining, Dharma means the real characteristic. The characteristics cannot be changed. Just like water is liquid, the characteristic is that every one of us is serving somebody superior. Sometimes it is said, Dharma projita kaitava. Kaitava means cheating, which is not dharma, which is not the characteristic. All right, so Prabhupada is talking about the, the meaning of this word dharma, that uh, it's not so easy to give the exact meaning. Prabhupada explains it's, it's a real characteristic, just like the characteristic of water is it, it's liquid. The, the, char the characteristic of sugar is sweet. The characteristic of a chili is hot. Uh, so the same way, what is the characteristic of the soul, of the living entity? And the characteristic of the Jiva Atma is that they are the servant. They are always serving somebody superior. Everyone Every living entity is engaged in some kind of service. So this is actually the meaning of dharma. But there's kaitava dharma, the cheating characteristic, not the actual characteristic. So if we claim that we're the master, that is kaitava dharma. That is a cheating dharma. That we're claiming this is, I'm the proprietor, I'm the master, I'm the controller. This is cheating. Prabhupada explains, the characteristic is that I am eternally servant of God. Instead of giving service to God, instead of, instead of giving, in, can, can we mute? So have you, if you've got some people there in the background, you have to mute yourself, please. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so the characteristic is that I am eternally servant of God. Instead of giving service to God, I am now engaging in the service of the dog. So, on the standard of this so-called service, Bhagavat Dharma is not discussed. Srimad Bhagavatam rejects all of these other dharmas. The service of the dog is not going to be there in Srimad Bhagavatam. That is Kaitava Dharma. The real dharma is the servant of God. So this is what's going to be presented in Srimad Bhagavatam. Here you can see dharma prajita kaitava. Prajita. The word, Prabhupada explained, the word prajita is significant. Pra means complete and ujita means it indicates rejection. And this is from our Adi Lila, chapter 1, verse 91. So Dharma Projita Kaitava completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. 
The motivation may be gross and it may be subtle. Dharma prajata kaitavo tra paramo atra parama, meaning this Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth, right? The supreme Dharma, the highest truth. This is Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada explains re religiosity in the shape of fruitive work is directly a method of gross sense gratification, whereas the process of culturing spiritual knowledge with a view to becoming one with the Absolute is a method of subtle sense gratification. All such pretentious religiosity based on gross or subtle sense gratification are completely rejected in the process of Bhagavad Dharma. So gross sense gratification is to desire some fruit of gain and the subtle sense gratification is the desire to become one with the Supreme. So the karmi or the, the karma yogi he wants a gross sense gratification and the jnana yogi wants subtle sense gratification. But they're all interested in something. Prabhupada explains, often when one is baffled in the pursuit of sense gratification, he takes to salvation and tries to become one with the Supreme Lord. Consequently, all these states are simply different types of sense gratification. From the second verse of the first chapter, from the purport. Now we do see in the world there is a lot of kaitava dharma, there's a lot of cheating religions. Even in the name of organized religion, there's a lot of uh, kaitava dharma. People go to God and they will pray, Oh, cure my disease, oh, help me, I'm in distress. I have this legal problem, please help me win the case. Like that, we're going to God for material benefit. And then you've got other people, who they just simply want to get relief from the material world. Their desire is liberation. Give me, give me moksha, take me out of this world. I can't bear it anymore. Oh God, take me out of this place. So this is sense gratification. From the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada explains, the process of Bhagavad Dharma is the transcendental religion. That is the eternal function of the living being. In Srimad Bhagavatam, a distinction between real religion and pretentious religion is clearly made. So right from the very beginning, from the invocation, Srila Vyasadeva is making it clear that he's presenting the standard of pure devotional service. Just like in the Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami also presents pure devotional service. Now, often we don't appreciate what is actually pure devotional service. We even practice Krishna consciousness with mixed devotion. We're, we're not actually, we're not always so conscious of pure devotion. And we come to Krishna with so many mixed desires. The young girl comes, she wants a good husband. Or the couple come, they want to have a child. Or people come with economic crisis, they're looking for a job, find a good job. Some people just want to, to get peace of mind, just to, to get some uh, relief from the pressures of the material world. Their motive is not to please Krishna. You see, the real purpose the real goal of life is to please Krishna. 
This, that is actual real religion, when our intention is simply to give pleasure to Krishna. So this will be brought out as we go through the second chapter. Okay, would someone like to read for me? Sure, Maharaj, I can read. Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha, Chatur, Varga are the four principles of religion that pertain to the material world. Therefore, in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is declared, Dharma Projita Kaitavatra, treating religious systems in terms of these four material principles are completely discarded. Srimad Bhagavatam teaches only how to develop one's dormant love of God. Adi Lila 7.84. Mm -hmm. So, Prabhupada, tells us the Chatur Vargas, the four goals of material life, right? Four principles are the four principles of religion in the material world. Begins with Dharma, which is material religiosity. Material religiosity with the intention that it will bring Artha, economic gain. And we can see that in the world. For example, the first uh, people, they say, you know, the Europeans, when they first went to America, when they crossed the Atlantic to go to the America, they were very pious, religious people. And when they got there to the USA, they built churches and they brought religion with them. But their motive was economic development. They got Arta, they got economic gain. And with the economic gain, they had sense gratification. So the Vedas prescribe that we should follow this path, and then the idea is that after sense gratification, you would become frustrated, and then we think about liberation. But it never usually works out like that. And we find out today that in the modern times, people have no interest in Dharma, and they have no interest in moksha. They don't, they're not really interested in artha, they just simply want karma. They just simply want sense gratification, that's the main thing. Just let me gratify my senses. They don't care about anything else, they're so mad for sense gratification. So this is the material world. A Srimad Bhagavatam is completely against all of this cheating, which goes on in the name of religion. So cheating religious systems. Some religions are promoting dharma, but with material, with the idea of material benefit. And other spiritual processes, they may be talking about moksha, getting out of the material world. So it's all cheating religion. It's not actually for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. And it has nothing to do with developing love of God. So that's why it's all cheating religion. And Srimad Bhagavatam is rejecting all of this cheating. Can you go ahead re read Prabhu? Keep reading. Sure, Roji. Sure, sure, Maharaj. Others also, the so-called religious system, they also think like that. The Christians, they go to the church, Oh God, give us our daily bread. So this bread supplying business is like that. God simply supplies bread and we eat and we enjoy. Similarly, the Hindu system also there is, Oh God, give me some money. I am very poor. I am suffering from disease. Please cure it. And so everywhere you will find some motive in religion. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2, 1 February 23, 1975. Yes, thank you. So Prabhupada is giving some examples of cheating religions. How we pray in Christianity, our Father, which heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name, give us this day our daily bread. So Prabhupada quotes that from this, the, the standard prayer which Christians have. Give us our daily bread. So Prabhupada, they, they think God is simply there to, supp to supply bread. There's the, the thought of giving us, serving God and developing love for God, this, you know, it never occurs to people. We simply think God is there as an 
order supply agent. You call them up, you tell them, bring me this, bring me that, and they send it to you. Now, nowadays, of course, we do it, right? We have, everybody has a handphone and you call up online and you say, send me this, send me a pizza, and, and they bring it over and like that. And Prabhupada talks how the Hindu tradition is also there, the same thing. Oh, I'm poor, I'm suffering, I have disease, please take care of me, cure it. So, material motives means we're never peaceful. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita it describes like that. Bhukti mukti siddhi kami sakale ashanta. Krishna bhakti niskam saisha shanta. That so long as one has some desire for bhukti or mukti or siddhi or kama, it will never be peaceful. But only the devotee, they're peaceful. Krishna bhakti nishkam saisha shanta. So the devotee, he has no material desires, so he is peaceful. But devotee desires to please Krishna. It's not material, that's a spiritual desire. So the, the second verse, you see, describes the qualification to develop this kind of love for Krishna. Dharma prajita kaitavo traparamo nirmatsaranam satam. Nirmatsaranam, meaning 100% pure in heart. And satam, meaning the devotees, and vidyam, understandable. So the Lord can only be understood by those who are 100% pure in heart. And this nirmatsaranam, this has to be understood. So devotees, we should be pure at heart to be able to understand the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada explains. Yes, someone read? Srimad Bhagavatam is translated into Urdu as all these sense gratificatory activities. It is purely transcendental literature which can be understood only by the pure devotees of the Lord who are transcendental to competitive sense gratification, 1.2 per foot. Mm. So transcendental literature and uh, it can only be understood by pure devotees who are transcendental to this competitive sense gratification. In the material world, everyone is competing with each other. And because we're competing with everyone for sense gratification, that's where the envy comes. Someone enjoys and somebody's not. Somebody's getting the sense gratification, someone's not. The person who's, got, who's not getting will envy the person who's getting. It's all about envy, competition, envy. You envy the winner. If you lose, you feel really bad. Oh, he beat me. Oh, they, he won. I didn't win. You feel very low. You feel dejected because you lost the competition. You lost the sense gratification. Actually, we should be glad we're saved. The person who gets the sense gratification, he will want more sense gratification. They want more sense gratification. It goes on, never ends, because that's the nature of lust. Burns like fire, never satisfied. So Srimad Bhagavatam uses this word, nirmatsaranam. Yes, someone read? Matsarta means to become intolerant when his neighbor is prosperous. In our Krishna consciousness movement, if we become envious, Oh, my God brother, oh, he has become so popular, he is making so much progress. So put some impediments towards his progressive path. This is also material. 
सो दिस भागवत धर्म इज नॉट फॉर सच एनवीएस पर्सन देर फोर इट इज स्टेटेड हियर परमो निर्मत सराणाम सताम नॉट फॉर द एनवीएस पर्सन द एनवीएस पर्सन दैट मीन्स मटेरियलिस्ट दे विल नॉट बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज स्पोकन इन द श्रीमद भागवत द वैकुंठा कॉन्शियसनेस इज दैट इफ योर नेबर इफ योर ब्रदर इज प्रॉस्परस और प्रोग्रेसिव देन वन शुड थिंक ओ ही इज सो नाइस दैट ही हैज सर्व गॉड सो नाइसली गॉड इज सो प्लीज अपॉन हिम दैट ही इज मेकिंग सो नाइस प्रोग्रेस दैट इज वैकुंठा कॉन्शियसनेस श्रीमद भागवतम वन वन टू लंडन ऑगस्ट एटीन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी Vaikuntha consciousness. We want to develop that kind of consciousness, the consciousness of the spiritual world. Wouldn't it be so nice? No envy. To give up envy. In the Bhagavad Gita, of course, Lord Krishna also praised Arjuna, because Arjuna is not envious. Therefore, Krishna selected him to hear the Bhagavad Gita. So we also we, we want to give up this envy. How can we do that? What? How can we ever overcome this 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 envy? Would anyone like to suggest? What is your plan? Engaging the mind in devotional service. Yes. How are you going to engage your mind in devotional service? By practically performing the service, at either at home or in the temple, and being in the association of others. So, what kind of service are you going to do? The first most important is the chanting. Okay. Of the holy name, chanting of the holy name. Okay, but even in chanting, we can be envious of others that oh, that devotee is chanting so nicely. My chanting so horrible. They're chanting so nicely, and they they look so absorbed in their chanting, and I my mind is everywhere, and I can't fix my mind. Oh, he, that devotees, they're so lucky they can chant so nicely and I can't chant so well. Right? We may envy another person. Why are we envious of someone? We should try and serve them. Like by serving, by rendering service to them slowly, our heart will be, you know, purified of that envy. Yes, that would be nice. That's very good. Yes, try to give service to the other devotee. If if we if we uh, appreciate that they've got some very good quality, we can praise them. It's not that we have to despise them because they have something, as Prabhupada describes here. Prabhupada said, "Oh, he is so nice. He has served God so nicely." Krishna is so pleased with him; he is making so nice progress. So appreciating the devotee, this is the idea. We have to train our mind to think like that. You know, in the material world, we, we train our minds to think bad of people. Oh, that person! Oh, you know, and we try to minimize them. And when we see when we see another person suffering. We feel good about it, and when we see a person doing well, then we feel bad about it. Oh, why that person's always doing so good? You know, why he's always getting so much credit? So we have to train our minds. We have to think that oh, that devotees he served Krishna so nicely. Krishna must be pleased with him. So. It, it's really a training of the mind, just to develop this kind of quality, to, to get free of this envy. Envy. This is why we're here in the material world, because we're all envious of Krishna. And we allow that enviousness of Krishna to reflect on so many other people, our other living entities, our god-brothers even, our devotees. 
we envy other people, but we just simply have to appreciate them and think, oh, they're so good, they're so great, they're doing really nice service. I wish I could do service like that. And in this way, we can, all, we can even ask them for their blessings. If you serve them, if you give them some service, you can say, please bless me that I can also become a good devotee like you. So this is the idea, developing humility will help us to give up that envy. And because we're proud, we don't like to think somebody's better than us. So we want to be humble and think of us ourselves as small and insignificant. So this is a spiritual consciousness, a Vaikuntha consciousness. So we ask you, how important is one's attitude outside of class in the study of Srimad Bhagavatam? Okay, let's make some, make pairs. Everyone go, uh, take a partner. Can we have pairs? Yeah, how many people? 32? Uh, we can have, uh, I mean, with you it is 32, so it is 31. So we can have 15 pairs. All right, 15 pairs, yes. Uh, should I break them in the rooms? Or, yeah, uh... Yes, break in the room. And this is a question. How important is one's attitude outside of class in the study of Srimad Bhagavatam? Discuss with a partner. Okay. Just for five minutes. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sonia Madhiji. Yes. Soma. Is it? Is that your name? Hare Krishna Madhiji. Can you hear me? Soma? Can you hear me, Manaji? Are you able to hear? I'm not hearing anything from you. Hare Krishna? Soma, can you hear me? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Soma.
Are you sure that? Oh, now you're responding. Okay. So I wanted to know, what do you think about how to reply to this question? How important is one's attitude outside of class in the study of Srimad Bhagavatam? Are you, are you, are you working? Do you have a job? Soma? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, do you have a job? Are you working in a job? Okay. Okay Maharaj. Actually, they put you also in the breakout room, so... Yeah, I want to know, are you working in a job? I uh, know, Maharaj. I'm just uh, logging into two different uh, system. Last time, what happened? Um, my internet disconnected, and then I, <laughs> I was struggling to re rejoin the group. Okay. So, what about your attitude? What What do you do right outside of class? Are you married? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, is your husband a devotee? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. Where do you live? I live in Mumbai, Maharaj. Okay. So do you go to temple there in Mumbai? Yes, yes. Uh, Jehu Chapa, uh, uh, sorry. Gopinath Temple is nearby. Oh, you go to Gopinath Temple. You're in Chapati there? Yes, yes, Chapati Temple. Oh, okay. Recently, Radhanath Swami Maharaj uh, took session on Nashima Nashima Chaturdeshi. Yes, yeah. Did you go? Yes, yes, of course. And we blessed to have his session. <laughs> okay, you got instruction from him. All right. So, what? Sorry, Maharaj, Maharaj. What, what? What about your attitude outside of class? You know, when we're in class, okay. When we're in class, you could be very nice and a very nice, attentive devotee. But when we come out of class, it may be a very different thing, you know? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Do you have any yeah. children? No, no, Maharaj. No children yet. Oh, no children yet. Okay, so you're a, a happy woman. <laughs> 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 you don't have to worry to, so much about children yet. You can in... Okay. Okay, so we have to go back. Let's see. Recording in progress. Hare Krishna. Everyone back? Maybe. Bhakti Prem Swami Maharaj would like to tell us something about this, how to respond to this question, Maharaj. What do you think? Oh, I'm muted. Hare Krishna. Oh. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right. And so I wanted to ask Bhakti Prem Swami Maharaj if he could open the discussion on this question. What should one's attitude be outside of class? Uh, thank you, Maharaj. So I think inside, outside should be transparent. <laughs> <laughs> Devotee means transparent. Why inside the class something, outside the class something? But whatever you learn in Bhagavatam class, Nirmatsha, Humility. So, actually, everybody wants that we should be humble to in front of them, and nobody wants that somebody invest in me. So, if we love them, we will say, "A uh, dog also wants that everybody should love me." So, if we love everybody, that you explain that the love is the opposite of enviousness, mere uh, Opposite Matsya is love, so 
as everybody wants someone should love us so from bhagavatam nirmatsar means we should not invest to anybody and love everyone <laughs> with great humility <laughs> hari krishna thank you maharaj all right so maharaj is in the mercy incarnation everyone should love like chaitanya mahaprabhu giving love to everyone so in the class outside of class there should be this love we should feel some appreciation concern compassion thinking about others Did someone else like to tell me what what did you discuss? What about Mataji's? Some of the Mataji's can answer. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, yes, Prabhu. So, um, Hari Krishna Maharaj, we discuss uh, Satyanandan Hari Prabhu and Devadatta Prabhu and myself. We discuss that one should be uh, humble, as uh, Bhakti Prabhu Maharaj said. Uh, one should be humble, tolerant. and uh glorify the devotees keep motivating the devotees even if they are doing a little seva just keep motivating them saying that they are doing a great service to the lordships and then um no prajalpa try to be not critique of the devotees and not to be judgmental just um try to distract or deviate away from the prajalpa and try to bring them to krishna katha and then um again inspire them or motivate them to do the chanting to do the japa more attentively this is what we discussed how are we going to motivate them by our own one thing one way is that by our own example or bring them to the japa sessions uh with the chanting and for the devotional seva um discuss them uh discuss with them how maybe we are doing the practical devotional seva towards the lordships Yes, I think this is very nice. Uh, your your point about the example is very important. That if we want to try to teach others, there has to be the example. You know, the best way to teach people is by our own example. I think Prabhupada said, he said, example speaks louder than words. You know, just telling people to do things it's not so good. But if we actually show the example ourselves. And your point about prajapa is also very nice. That's very important thing to try to keep always the devotees in Krishna consciousness. We hear Shrimad Bhagavatam. When we come out of the Shrimad Bhagavatam class, we should think, what did we hear in the class? And we can repeat it. You know, enlightening one another and conversing about Krishna. So we heard something in the class. people often say what do you remember from the class you know we should think some points what were brought up in the class what did we learn what was it he was talking about it's very important it's a very important exercise for the mind remembering krishna remembering shrimad bhagavatam sometimes people go to class they come out they don't, they don't remember anything what was the verse or they don't even know <laughs> so we do we do really want to try to enter into the mood of hearing shrimad bhagavatam hearing carefully sushrushro right uh, that that the very uh, intensive hearing that's very important part of the process of hearing shrimad bhagavatam with full absorption and then when we when we really absorbed in the shrimad bhagavatam after class it will come out we will be speaking about it oh that prabhu said this in the class that point came up in that verse and remember and then you may have other points you can bring up other verses similar or different points other things in other scriptures relating to the verse which was taught in shrimad bhagavatam So the Shrimad Bhagavatam class is there in the morning. It's meant to be like our, you know, our give us some appetite for the day to carry us through the day that we can go through the day remembering this verse of Shrimad Bhagavatam, thinking about that verse of the whole day 
and then the next day you have the next verse. You go on in this way. In this way, always being absorbed in the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the success of life. That absorption in Srimad Bhagavatam, that is that Satyam Param Dimahi. That is our meditation on the highest truth. We're actually meditating on Krishna if we are meditating on the Srimad Bhagavatam. Any other points? Any other devotees would like to add? Is this... Hare Krishna, Ma Hare Krishna yeah. Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, we can, uh, uh, the qualities we can incorporate in ourselves is, num uh, may, maybe uh, we can stop fault find finding in others. Uh, we can stop uh, greediness. We can show gentleness. And uh, most importantly, we, if we uh, give uh, service to the uh, Vaishnavas or the devotees, then uh, by their mercy we can get uh, good qualities or blessings of Krishna, maybe. Oh, okay, very nice. Yes, we want very to get fun. we want to get the good qualities, the blessings of the devotees will help. Yes, and not criticizing others, but appreciating others. So the way to stop criticizing others is seeing the good in others. Yeah. Seeing the good. And particularly we want to think about what's there in Srimad Bhagavatam, remembering the pastimes and the incidents which are all described there in Srimad Bhagavatam. So keeping our mind focused on the message of the scriptures. That's very helpful. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we'll go ahead. Let me see. Okay. So, from the second verse, Mahamuni Krite Kimva Pare. So, Mahamuni Krite. Mahamuni meaning Srila Vyasadev. He is the author of all other Vedic literature, yet he recommends the study of Srimad Bhagavatam above all others. He says, Kimva Parer Ishwara. What is the need of any other scripture? If we have Srimad Bhagavatam, we don't need anything else. Uh, I think. It, 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 in the history, it describes that at one point the, the Arabs came to Egypt. And when they came to Egypt, they saw there was a, this, there were, the Egyptians, they had a huge library of all the different texts of the, the past, of the, the history of Egypt and so many different uh, things about the Egyptian civilization. So the Arabs came there, and the Arabs, of course, they were promoting Islamic faith. And the head of the army, he said, everything which is useful is said in the Quran. He said, if it's not in the Quran, it's no use. So he said, everything which is useful was there in the Quran, and all other things are no use. So he said, burn everything else. And so they set fire to this library of very, very valuable books, which were the records of the Egyptian civilization, and they just burned them to ashes. So we lost a very vital historical evidence about the Egyptian civilization. And their basis, the basis of the Muslim invaders was everything is there in the Quran. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he also says, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says the same thing about Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, everything which we need to know is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. We don't need anything else. So if all the other books of the world, if they're all burned, if they're all destroyed, if they're, they're not printed again, it won't be a great loss because everything is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. How do we know that everything is there? Because Maha Muni Krite. Because this Bhagavatam is compiled 
by the great sage Srila Vyasadeva. And Srila Vyasadeva is the incarnation of Godhead. He is the Lord himself who is empowered to write all of these books. And this, this Srimad Bhagavatam was written in his maturity. Of course, Srila yeah, can we mute everything? If there's some noise there in the background, can you mute? mute? I don't know. Is he asking a question or what? I, I can't understand what he's trying to speak. Yeah, I can't understand either. All right. Uh, let's see, where are we? Okay, Mahamuni Kritik. We're speaking about Srila Vyasadeva, that everything is there. And Srila Vyasadeva is the authorized representative of Godhead. He knows everything and he's compiled everything there in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's his mature offering. After compiling the Puranas and the Mahabharata and after dividing the Vedas into four, then after instruction from Narada Muni, he compiles the Srimad Bhagavatam. And that Srimad Bhagavatam, it is described in the third verse, it is the fruit of all of the Vedas, the fruit, the ripened fruit of the Vedas. The Vedas are like a tree and the valuable part of the tree is the mango. Now is mango season. It's supposed to be anyway. Not many mangoes this year. <laughs> but when there's mangoes on the tree, then the tree is very valuable. When there's no mangoes, nobody cares. But as soon as there's some fruits there, it's valuable. So the fruit of the Vedic literature is Srimad Bhagavatam. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is not just the fruit, but it's the ripened fruit. It is the highest ras. Prabhupada explains why it, this Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of the Vedas. He said, because it explains the highest rasa, the highest loving mellow of exchange between Krishna and his devotees. Maharaj's slide is not changing. Sorry, slide is not changing? Yes, Maharaj. It is still stuck on chapter one overview. Yeah, I know. It, 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 it's okay. It came there. But you can see I'm coming ahead. There's a new one. We're going ahead into the second chapter. That was just to review again the first chapter before we go into the second chapter. Okay? It's, it, there's no fault in the slides. It's just like that. We, I'm, we made it like that. Just to remind you what's in the first chapter before we go into the second chapter. So the first th three verses were the invocation and then the sages describe Sutta Goswami's qualification and then they make their inquiries, six, six questions. And this way we go into the second chapter. We go into the second chapter and the second chapter begins with Sutta Goswami offering his respects. It is customary, before we speak, it is customary to offer prayers. Now some devotees may offer prayers briefly and some devotees may offer prayers in a more prolonged fashion. So here in Srimad Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami offers his respects and he offers to Sukadeva Goswami. He offers, of course, why would he offer to Sukadeva Goswami? Somebody can say? Because he heard the Bhagavatam from him. Yes, right. He heard. Who was Sukadeva speaking to? Was Sukadeva only speaking to Sukadeva? Ma Ma Maharaj Parikshit. Right. 
and Sutta Goswami was in the audience. And why does he offer obeisances to Srila Vyasadeva? Because he's the author of Srimad Bhagavatam? Yes, because he's the author of the Srimad Bhagavatam, right. So Srila Vyasadeva, in his maturity, compiled this Srimad Bhagavatam, the fruit of all the Vedas. Now, uh, we hear about Sukha Deva Goswami. Sukha Deva Goswami, Sukha means the parrot. So, uh, it was stated there actually in the third verse that this Srimad Bhagavatam is more sweeter because it's coming from the lip of Shukadeva Goswami. Uh, Sukha meaning parrot. So, can you explain what is the significance uh, that it's coming from Shukadeva Goswami? As a, you know, the, what's the, the, the example that Sukha means parrot? Why is Shukadeva simply a parrot? Prabhupada explains that uh, when the fruit is bitten by the red beak of the parrot, it becomes even more sweet. So like that, Shukadeva Goswami is presenting this very sweetly. Yes. Could we say that, oh, he's, he's a parrot, so he's just parroting everything he had? Prabhupada says it is not like, not because of that, but it is because it is, he is presenting it so sweetly, that is why he has been compared to it. Yes, he's pre pre he's pre he presents it in a manner which attracts even his own father, Srila Vyasadeva, and Srila Vyasadeva's own spiritual master, Narada Muni. That the two of them, they both came there to hear Sukadeva Goswami speak. Because Sukadeva Goswami was presenting the Srimad Bhagavatam in such a wonderful manner that they, they were drawn to appreciate it. Now Narada Muni, he'd already given the Srimad Bhagavatam to Vyasadeva, and Vyasadeva had given it to Sukadeva Goswami. But when Sukadeva Goswami spoke, he spoke it in such a nice manner, in such a wonderful way, that they were also drawn, they were, in, they were so impressed. They want, they enjoyed to hear so much. Prabhupada says that Shukadeva Goswami uh, was able to present it in a manner in which it could be more easily understood and greatly appreciated than previously. So that was Sukadeva Goswami. Not that he was just simply repeating things. You know, somebody, if, we, if we just parrot something, you just say it verbatim. You just say everything and the way it was said. But he didn't do that. He presented it in a manner in which it could be properly understood and it could be assimilated and digested. So it's described like that. This, this fruit is... Uh, uh, how does it go? What's the verse again? Uh, Nigal makalpa taror galetampalam, shuka mukad amrita drava samyatam, pibata bhagavatam rasamalayam mahuraho rashika bhuvi bhavuka. It is full of ras. The Srimad Bhagavatam is full of ras. And it's very sweet and relishable. And it's all, it's all ras. You know, usually when you get the fruit, you have a big stone, you know, you get this lychee, you know, it's very delicious, but, you know, there's a big stone in the middle, and they have the skin on the outside, and you only get a little bit of flesh. But the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's all relishable, it's all ras, and it's so pleasing and satisfying. So this is the specific nature of the Srimad Bhagavatam, that it's easily digestible and fully relishable. So Sutta Goswami offers his respects to Sukadeva Goswami and to Srila Vyasadi. And in this way he's preparing himself to begin to speak to the sages and to reply to their different inquiries. 
and he begins by glorifying the inquiries of the sages. He's, a, he's very happy to get their questions. The inquiries which the sages made were very pleasing to Sutta Goswami because they gave him the subject matter for what he could speak on. And from their questions he can understand that they're very serious students. Hmm? So he appreciates their inquiries. Well, here's the verse which uh, Sutta Goswami recites in beginning his prayers, first of all offering obeisances to Lord Narayan, Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadev, the author. So the sages say to Sutta Goswami, Krishna Samprashna, your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna. That is the important thing. We want to talk about Krishna. The questions must be in relation to Krishna. We don't want questions about anything, any other topic. We don't want to go away from the, the real topic of discussion. We want to hear topics which are in connection to Lord Krishna. And so because the sages had inquired about Lord Krishna, so their questions are worthy, they're appreciated. Yenatma suprasiddhati. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. We want to satisfy the self. We want to hear, we need to hear about Krishna, Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna means not only Lord Krishna the person, but also Lord Krishna's different expansions and incarnations and his different energies, his potencies, everything in relation to Krishna. And in this way we will feel the satisfaction of the Self. But any other topic will not satisfy us. The material world, the gossip of the material world, the prajalpa, all the other things, they're not going to satisfy us. There's no satisfaction in the material energy. Bhavad bir loka mangalam. And so are of relevance to the world's welfare. So we spoke before about how the sages are compassionate. They're concerned about the welfare of the world. They're not just, they didn't go to Naimasharanya to perform a sacrifice just for their own benefit. Today, you know, if you go to Naimasharanya, there's a lot of people there, but you won't find too many sages there. And the people who go there to perform sacrifice, maybe they bring their child to shave their head or something, but they're not thinking about any real spiritual benefit. They're simply thinking about their material benefit. They've come there with material desires, material motivation. But these sages, 5,000 years ago, they were genuine, that they really thought about the benefit of others. The, and they were concerned about the whole world. And hearing about Krishna, they knew this was the best thing for the whole world. Uh, Prabhupada told us there was Prabhupada told one devotee there was one devotee he was he was actually in Hong Kong and he was alone. There were no devotees. He was all alone. We didn't we hadn't made any devotees at that time in Hong Kong. And devotees would go there and so somehow this devotee was there and he told Prabhupada, he said, you know, I'm here in Hong Kong all on my own. And Prabhupada wrote back to him and said, stay there, don't leave. You just stay there and keep chanting Hare Krishna. He said, that will be good for Hong Kong and good for the world. <laughs> so 
Prabhupada was thinking about the whole world's welfare. And Prabhupada knew just to have one devotee there chanting Hare Krishna would make that place auspicious. So how much more it's true when the sages had all gone there to Naimasharanya to inquire about the oncoming Kali Yuga, about the, the perils and the evils and what to do about this Kali Yuga which is coming. The personality of Kali is going to come. Everything's going to decline. What are we supposed to do? And so the sages had come there. They're looking for guidance to get help from Srila Vyasadeva and they're asking these questions. Right? So there's six questions. Right? Who, rem who remembers? What's the first question the sages have? Maharaj, what is the essence of all these scriptures? What is the essence of all these, of all the scriptures? Right. There are so many scriptures, so many teachings. What is the essence? What's the most important point of all these scriptures? It's so easily to, so easy to become confused. You go to a bookstore, and you're, even you're looking for a Bhagavad Gita. There's so many different editions of Bhagavad Gita. What to re which ones should you read? How do we know? What's the essence? So the sages wanted to know from Sutta Goswami, what is the essence of all the scriptures? Yes? And then the second question? What is the ultimate good for all? The ultimate good for all. Maharaji, ultimate good for all was the first question, and then essence of all is scriptures is the second question. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, essence of all. The essence of all is the first question, and then ultimate good, the second question. All right, so the first question is answered. Uh, the, the ultimate good is devotional service. The supreme occupation for all humanity to attain is loving service to the Supreme Lord. Such service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. The, so the supreme occupation, you know, there's so many occupations in the world, but the ultimate occupation it's not working for IBM or working for Twitter or any of these big companies, but it's devotional service for Lord Krishna. That's the ultimate occupation. So we all have that opportunity to engage in the Lord's ultimate service. And then the second question, what, what, what was the second question again? The ultimate good for others. Maharaj, the second is, what is the essence of all scriptures? First is, what is the absolute and ultimate good? So the first one was absolute and ultimate good, and second is, what is the essence of all scriptures? Okay, the essence of all scriptures. And we're told the essence of all scriptures is that we should practice devotional service. Vasudevi Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jnana yati asuvairagyam jnanam chiyat ahaitukam. That by doing devotional service, then we will cultivate knowledge and detachment. So that is for the ultimate good. Just simply by doing devotional service, we can develop all the good qualities. So that is the ultimate good for everyone. We want to develop better quality, become a better person. Prabhupada said like that, he said, if I have done anything, he said, I have given a better life for so many people. Because Prabhupada taught us to do devotional service. And devotional service means we will develop better qualities. So Srila Vyasadeva quotes that by doing devotional service, you get causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Like that. So those two questions are dealt with in the very beginning 
of uh, Sutta Goswami's reply. Let's continue a little bit here. Prabhupada's response, speaking about asking questions. Yes, someone read? Thank you, Shkamalaj. So therefore, this Krishna Samparshana, if simply people become inquisitive, what is Krishna, and you simply try to answer them, we have got so many books now, then the whole world will be peaceful. Yena Atma Suprashiddhati. So try to impress the whole Western world about Krishna Samparshana, then they will be happy. That is our mission, Srimad Bhagavatam, 1.2.5 Vrindavan, October 16, 1972. So Prabhupada is encouraging the devotees, try to impress the whole Western world about Krishna Samprashna. And Prabhupada's motivation, Prabhupada's eagerness to give Krishna consciousness to the Western world. And he knew that what's in the West, then it will come back to the East. So he said, we have got so many books, the whole world will be peaceful. Not just only the West. What, what's there in the West will definitely come to the East. What goes, it goes around, right? So Prabhupada wanted to give Krishna consciousness and he was doing it by books. Of course, now with this pandemic, our book distribution has really been affected. The book distribution is suffering this year. We hope gradually it can be restored. We, a good number of people took advantage of the pandemic to get Srimad Bhagavatam sets and to get, because they were at home more, so they had more time to read. So many people did get sets. Some temples were distributing more Srimad Bhagavatams than usual. So that was good. But still, there's a lot of people out there and there's so many people who need to get the books, need to hear about Krishna. All right, so the, what have we been talking about today? The components of the prelude to Srimad Bhagavatam. Three verses, the first three verses. First of all, we had the definition of the Absolute Truth, and then the second and third verse were describing, well, the second verse was describing about cheating and real religion, or pretentious and real religion. And then the third verse was describing the sweetness of actual devotional service, of Krishna consciousness, tasting the rasa. Um, so the, the glorification of the process of Srimad Bhagavatam. So the first three verses are the invocation and then the six questions of the sages and identify Sutta Goswami's respective responses. So the first question, the first question Right? Somebody tell me, what is the first question? Have you got your student handbook there? Yes. What yes. is the absolute and ultimate good, Shrey, for people in general? The absolute and ultimate good for people in general. So, what is that absolute and ultimate? What is the absolute and ultimate good? It is the process of devotional service. Not just simply to understand we're not the body, but to understand we're the servant of Krishna. And our goal in life is to please Krishna, to develop the mood of giving pleasure to Krishna, service to, by loving service. This is the ultimate good. This is the param, param dharma, the supreme occupation. And then the second question was? What is the essence, essence of, of all scriptures? The essence of all scriptures. So that was explained that we want to perform devotional service and cultivate qualities like knowledge and detachment. 
knowledge, costless knowledge of the Lord and his relationship with the living entities and detachment from the world, from everything which does not foster Krishna consciousness. Just simply by engaging in devotional service, we develop all the good qualities. And then the third question is, Tell us why Shri Krishna, a Supreme Personality of Godhead, appeared. Why the Supreme Lord appeared in the womb of Devaki? Is it? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Why the Lord appeared, the purpose of the appearance of the Lord. So that will be described in the In the, particularly in the tenth canto, we'll hear about why the Lord appeared. Then the fourth question. Tell us of the acts the Lord performs in relationship to creating the material world. All right, so that's uh, how Jiva Goswami understands the questions in relation to the creation of the material world. They want to know about the pastimes of the Lord and creation. So he wants to know about the Purusha avatars, particularly Mahavishnu, Garbhodakshai Vishnu, Shirodakshai Vishnu. And that will be described in the second and then the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, where the creation is explained. And then the fourth question, is the fifth question? Describe the pastimes and adventures of the Lord's multi-incarnations. The pastimes and adventures of the Lord in his different incarnations, Lila avatars, that is going to be described in the third chapter of the first canto. So after the second, the third chapter, we'll hear about the Lord's different incarnations, Lila avatars, his pastimes. Yes. And then the final question is that. They have. Yes, so long as Lord Krishna <coughs> is present. That we understood that Lord Krishna was the personification of all religious principles. But now, because Lord Krishna had departed from the world, so where are the religious principles to be found now, now that Lord Krishna is no longer present? And so the reply is given there in the, uh, towards the end of the second chapter, where it said that Krishna Swadamo Pagate Dharma Jnana Bisaha Kalo Nishtam Drishamesha Puranarto Trinodrita. It is said, the answer is that this Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna for his own abode. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the age of Kali will get light from this Purana. So th the answer is given by Sutta Goswami that after Lord Krishna disappeared, that's when the Srimad Bhagavatam appeared. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is the incarnation of the Lord who has come in the Kali Yuga to help all of us, to give us light and to save us from the influence of the age of Kali. So there are six questions of the sages and actually these six questions form the basis of the all, all twelve cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam. That they go on and more questions arise and, and this way we come to twelve cantos. All right, and then the beginning of the second chapter was described. We spoke about Sutta Goswami offering his obeisances, respecting the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Narayan, Nara, Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and Srila Vyasadeva, the author. And then he, he also offers his obeisances to his own spiritual master, Sukadeva Goswami, from whom he had heard the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that was there at the beginning of the second chapter. 
We did speak about the distinction between real and pretentious religion with reference to the second verse. That pretentious religion is simply kaitava dharma. It is simply cheating religion. If we are engaged in religious practice, but our motive is simply for our own sense gratification, then it is simply cheating religion. It is not genuine religion. We often give the example, just like the man may say to the woman, or, or rather the woman may say to the man, she may say to the man, I love you, I love you. But all the time she's thinking, where's the money? This, like, the, you know, the, the prostitute lady, sometimes they'll, they'll talk like that to their customers. She will tell the man, I love you, but she's thinking, where's the money? So that is cheating religion. We go to God and we tell God, I love you, I love you, but cure my disease, give me money, take care of my problems. So this is not real religion. We have to understand the distinction. We want pure devotion. Rupa Goswami wrote Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It's all about pure devotion, not mixed devotion. And from the very beginning he defines what is pure devotion. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma janavritam anuku yena krishna no shilanam bhakti uttamam. Pure devotional service must be without any desire for philosophical speculation or fruit of activity. It must be performed simply for the pleasure of Krishna, to please Krishna. So that is actual real religion and we want to encourage that mood among all the devotees. Not this mixed devotion just to get some benefit, material benefit. Uh, examples of cheating religion, cheating religion. Well, any religion which is encouraging people with their material sense gratification, then it is cheating religion. If we simply pray to God, sometimes uh, one of my friends one time, he told me he went to church, he went to a Christian church, and he was surprised when he heard them praying. He said it was just like a big list of, you know, please give us a good health and protect our family members from the COVID. We don't want to get the COVID. And please make sure anybody who got the COVID that our family members will recover. And please keep us all in a long life and we should live together happily and provide everything we need to keep us all peaceful and satisfied. It was just so, it was just simply one desire after another. It's just like you go into a shop and you tell the shopkeeper what you want. We think, we think God is like that. We think he's running a, an order supply business, you know. Order supply, you know, you call up the company, can you supply me this, can you give me, you know, give me this mercy, and give me that mercy, and don't forget this and that. And we think God is simply there to supply everything we need. So this is cheating religion. We want to reject that. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is all rejected. Srimad Bhagavatam is for those who are nirmatsaranam. Remember, free from envy, without envy. They're finished with that competitive, they don't have that competitive mood anymore. They're not trying to be the best. They're not trying to be the world champion. They just want to be a Das, das, anu, das. And then Mahamuni Krite, Kimva Parer. The significance of the Bhagavatam with reference to Mahamuni Krite, Kimva Parer. We don't need any other book. If we have Srimad Bhagavatam, everything is there. There was this one family, maybe you know this family, that they the Gupta family, uh, they were living in USA, and they had a, the mother, had, the, 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 the couple had a, two sons, 
And the, the mother decided, rather than put the children into school, she would do homeschooling. And she did homeschooling with her two sons. And she simply used Srimad Bhagavatam. The whole, their whole education was based around Prabhupada's books, particularly Srimad Bhagavatam. And so they grew up to be very great scholars. One of them got into MIT and he did his PhD there, and the other one went on to become a professor in Asian studies, and he's written many papers. And they were just educated at home by their mother. And the mother used Srimad Bhagavatam to educate them. And when the, the boy was even just like 12 years old, he was already writing articles for Back to Godhead magazine. There was a number of articles when he was a young boy, he used to write regularly for the Back to Godhead magazine. It's, it's a good proof. It shows us everything is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. We just have to read the Srimad Bhagavatam. You can get everything we need from there. It is the fruit, and particularly it is full of rasa. Rasa, this is the unique feature of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mayavadis, impersonalists, and jnanis, they cannot appreciate rasa. Rasa is only for the devotees, this mood of rasa, the, the, how the Krishna enjoys rasa with his devotees. This can only be understood by those who are devotees, the personalists, who have the personalist philosophy. Impersonalists, they cannot understand these things. It's simply beyond their mind, beyond their ability to understand. Only the devotees can understand the meaning of Ras and Krishna's Rasa with his devotees. So everything is there in Srimad Bhagavatam, the highest ras. Then we did speak also a little bit about here, I mentioned here Nirmat Saranam, the appropriate attitude for study of Bhagavatam in relation to Nirmat Saranam. When we study Srimad Bhagavatam, don't envy others, appreciate them. Appreciate others. Develop this, give up this envy. Just be a humble devotee and be focused on understanding our insignificance in relation to Krishna. You know, when we read the, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, for example, Krishna does Kaviraj describes himself there. He says, Jagaimadai haiti munishe papista purushe rakita haiti munishe lagista. Krishna, as Kaviraj said, I am lower than a worm in stool. Anyone who utters my name loses all their pious activities. I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. So this is the humility of devotees like Krishna Das Kaviraj. And Prabhupada said, he's not just saying that, he really meant it. They really mean it. They always think themselves so far. Just like Naratam Das says, you know, when we sing that song, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karamuri, Toma Vina Ke Dayalu Jagata Samsari. There's no one more fallen than me in this world. My claim is first. You've come to deliver the fallen souls. My claim is first. I'm the most fallen. And they mean it. We want to appreciate them. The more a devotee advances, the more humble they become. And the more they give up envy and they think of themselves as low and unqualified. So this is important, and this is brought out in the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, in the second verse, that if we want to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, we have to give up this envy. We have to become Nirmat Saranam. Okay, so you can choose a verse 
are parts of verses in this section which you consider most useful in preaching and explain why. <laughs> That's something you could think over tonight. You Maybe we can take a feedback on this tomorrow, when we meet tomorrow. Look over these verses, are, are parts of a verse in this section here, and think how it would be useful in preaching, how you could use it. So, Maharaj, this is a sort of homework for everyone? Yes, right. This is a homework for you to absorb your mind in thinking about what we've covered today and how you can use it for preaching. Here's a quote from Prabhupada from the second chapter, third verse. Because the Srimad Bhagavatam deals with questions and answers that are related to Krishna, we can derive the highest satisfaction only by reading and hearing this transcendental literature. One should learn the Srimad Bhagavatam and make an all-around solution to all problems pertaining to social, political or religious matters. Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna are the sum total of all things. From the second chapter, third verse, purport of the first canto. Okay, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Anybody? Yes, it was from Maharaji. Uh, in tomorrow class, can we declare the OBA questions? Can we what? OBA, open book assessment questions, oh. if we can. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to do that for you. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Thank you so much for the class. Krishna, thank you for the class. I wanted to ask that more about Nad Narayan Rishi. Yes. Can you tell about Nad Narayan Rishi? Could I tell you about Nad Narayan Rishi? Yes. Sir. Well, what does he say? Nad Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. The supermost human being, that they reside in Badarik Ashram and they perform great austerities there to teach all of us the importance of performing austerity. There so Maharaj, is he, is he also an incarnation of Krishna? Na, well, Nara and Narayan, right? One is Narayan and one is Nara. Nara is the, the, the living entity, the jiva, and Nara, Narayan. God and his expansion. There is Narayan and Nara. So one is Narayan and one is the living entity. And they're always together. Like Pankajangari and Jananivas in Mayapur. They were like that. Brahmacharis. They're fixed in celibacy. And they're very renounced and detached from the material world. And they, they live in the top of the Himalayas, in Badarik Ashram, performing austerities there. Yes? Thank you so much, Maharaj. You want, to, you want to go there and meet them? You want to go to Badarik Ashram and meet them? Yes, Maharaj. Well, remember, you know, it's not just Badarik Ashram which we know, but it's beyond that. There's a the sub there's a heavenly Badarik Ashram. You have to transcend the material platform to actually reach to the the abode where they are. Just like Srila Vyasadeva, he's also there. But if you go there, 
you know, we won't see them. You have to transcend. When Madhvacharya said, when Madhvacharya went there, he was able to meet, he was able to, by his purity, he was able to enter into the spiritual realm and he could actually meet with Vyasadeva. He could actually go there and be with them. But unless you're very, very advanced, very pure, very, a very great soul, then we won't be able to enter into that realm, the celestial realm. You don't just go there, just like going to Vrindavan. You don't just go to Vrindavan by buying a ticket. You have to change the consciousness. Now, we may think we're in Vrindavan, but we don't actually see Vrindavan. We have to change the consciousness. So similarly, you want to meet Nara Narayan and you want to go to the Padrik Ashram, you have to change the consciousness, you know, we have to give up all of our attachment and identification to the material world. And then we can transcend that material energy, right, transcend the three modes of nature. Trion mulanam, right? The three modes, transcend the modes to enter into the spiritual realm. So by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, you can do it. Just like Prabhupada said, you keep reading Srimad Bhagavatam, one day you will see Krishna in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. So you keep reading Srimad Bhagavatam, you can also see Nara Narayan Rishis one day in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hey. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, this Prabhu Hare Krishna. I have one question from our today's class. So we were discussing about being the Matsara Nam, uh, getting rid of envy. So Srila Prabhupada has mentioned that uh, we should glorify the devotees. So my understanding is we should genuinely glorify the devotees, but in our conditioned state, we are not able to do that. So, as we are doing sadhana bhakti, uh, how we can practice uh, this um, art of glorifying devotees and, you know, this makes us uh, that we can come down to genuinely glorify the devotees and actually get rid of all the envy in our heart. Well, simply by engaging in our devotional service and rendering humble service to the devotees. As the Mataji said, and uh, the devotees said today, they said, Serve to serve the devotee. We may envy someone, so give, render some humble service to them and seek their blessings, develop their friendship. And in this way, we will give up the competitive mood which is causing the envy. The envy is coming because we're trying to compete with them. We want to be better than them. This is the problem. We have this competitive, we have to compete with everyone. I want to be the best, I want to be number one. And we're trying to compete with everyone. But we have to become humble. We want to become the servant of the servant of the servant. Think of ourselves as insignificant. Of course, at the same time, doesn't mean we don't do anything, but we, we want to fully engage ourselves, to keep ourselves engaged in the trying to please the devotees and to get their blessings, to, to, to serve them, to develop their, a, a pre, an appreciation for them, that somehow they've got qualities which I would like. And how could we get, the, how could we get qualities which they have? By getting their blessings, by serving them. They'll gradually, they'll bestow their blessings on us. So serving the devotees, even if, if, if you're not able, to, if you don't get the opportunity to serve them, at least to praise them, even though we may not appreciate it. But if we just speak in our mind, if we speak out that, oh, this devotee has done so nicely, oh, he's such a good devotee, one day I also would like, in the future, maybe life, uh, maybe in my coming births, I will also can I can do service like that devotee. Recording stop. Recording in progress. 
we want to get the blessings, we want to just develop some appreciation for these devotees. Rather than being envious of them, we want to glorify them, we want to think they're so good, they're so lucky, they're so... somehow they've got the blessings of Lord Krishna. If only I can also be like them one day. Maybe not in this lifetime, but maybe in the future. So like that, we don't need to, we don't need to be envious, it's just a, it's something which we have, we've developed this habit and just like people develop habits, smoking and drinking. So we have a habit to think bad about people. We have to just change that habit. Instead of thinking bad, think good about them. Hmm? Thank you so much, Mahamad. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. In uh, Canto 1, 2.7, it is mentioned Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janati Asu Vairagyam Jnanam Chajat Pahitukam. Uh, will you please uh, um, explain more about Pahitukam? This Ahitukam or this is my number one question. Number two question is that he, uh, pure devotional service means the desire should be only to satisfy the Lord. And in Bhagavad Gita, the contrast to that, uh, it's mentioned Chatur Vida Bhajanti Mam Jana Sukruti Narjuna Arto Jigyansu or Tharthi Gyani. So the Artha Jigyansa or Tharthi Gyani is that coming in the amid of Dilmasrana? Uh, um, is it coming in? So these two, please, can you? Okay. Well, first of all, Ahai to come. Ahai to come meaning no material motivation. Right? The motivation should be simply for Krishna. The motivation is not to get something for ourselves, but the motivation is to, to serve Krishna, to give to Krishna, to offer service to Krishna. So, ahaitaki, unmotivated. The, generally, people are motivated what will I get? How much will you pay me? What are you going to give me if I do this for you? But devotional service, Prabhupada explains, means finish up your business. Stop thinking about business. Stop thinking about what you're going to get. And think about giving. Giving without any remuneration, without getting anything in return. We just simply want to give service to Krishna. This is ahaitaki, unmotivated, no motivation. We're not thinking about ourself. So instead of being selfish, it's selfless. Selfish people, they want, give me, I want this, give me that. But we should become selfless. I don't, I don't want any, I just simply want to do service, birth after birth. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, birth after birth, I just simply want to do service. So that is a high to key, right? Are you okay? Yes. Are you okay? Yes, and that, and, yes, the first. and then the second question you're asking about, is uh, the, the four kinds of people who surrender to Krishna, Arto Jignasur Artarti, Jnani Cha Bharatarshava. Yes, yes, Maharaj. So you're asking, are they in the category of Nirmatsaranam? Yes, Maharaj, that is my question. Well, it will. It, it, it's going to 
you see these four kinds of people they're all pious people because of so the four kinds of people who come to Krishna, they're all pious people, they all have Sukriti, they've come to Krishna. But as, as we, we say, some of them, you know, like aren't, one, somebody has material desires, he's in the, he, he, maybe economic problems, he's in search of opulence, just like Dhruva Maharaj came in search of wealth. And so you could say there's some element there of uh, envy, a little bit, com certainly the competitive mood was there. He wanted to, to get a kingdom greater than his father. So initially it was like that. Yes, and similarly Gajendra, he was concerned with his own life. Save me, save me, you know, crocodiles got me. And so also, you know, it's also near Matsaranam. There's, it's not really for the pleasure of, the pleasure of Krishna. So yes, near Matsara, near Matsara, some, they're, they're, they have some envy there. But that was their initial phase. Later on they went on to become you know, they changed. Gajendra became a great devotee. And then also Dhruva Maharaj also, of course, he became a great devotee. The four Kumaras, they were in search of knowledge, but they also became devotees when they went to the spiritual world. When they saw Lord Padmanabha, they changed. When they smelt the aroma of the Tausi leaves from the lotus feet of the Lord, they became devotees. So in the beginning, yeah, we're, we're all envious, but we can change, we can, we can give it up. We can become pure devotees. So we don't have to stay envious. Right? Initially, they have the desire for uh, something self-interest, self-motivated. Yes. But later on, in association of the devotees or in association of the Lord. Yes. Is that right. okay? Yes. Is that uh, yeah, right. Yeah, in, in the association of the Lord. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, Prima. All right, any other questions? Okay, then we will stop here and we will see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Gorbhaita Vrinda ki jai.